my son just finished his freshman year of college, and I'm questioning what the future is for him in higher education, given all the change that AI is going to going to have on on every career and every profession. And I'm wondering what advice you'd give to to your child or uh, or someone who's in college right now for what what's an area of study that won't maybe won't be disrupted by by AI or or an area that um, AI you'll get leverage from your education um, through AI. I think the reality is that most of the existing jobs that we have in the United States are going to go to lower cost locations that have that tool chain to accelerate their capability. So we are going to have to reinvent the workforce and the things that we do over the next 30 or 40 years to stay relevant. That's probably like, I, sh- I think that should just be the operating principle. If you think about it, we used to run great call centers. Okay, those call centers were outsourced to the Philippines and India. But in the next you know, five or 10 years, you'll have this flawless, unaccented English or even more eerily, perfectly accented English for the zip code of the person that's calling in so that it sounds like they're talking to somebody that's literally their neighbor. That's like just makes so much sense, right? So it's like all this stuff is going to happen where like all these classes of jobs are going to go away. I saw this article where a lawyer, two lawyers use chat GPT to submit a legal brief. The problem was that it cited cases that didn't exist and now they're going to be disbarred. So this is like serious business, right? Like you can't do that. Like that's like real legal malfeasance. So what are your kids studying? Not practice. In college. You know, if I had to choose something for my kids, I would probably I would probably tell them to do something mathematical or biological. The reason I would point them to math is that I think that it's irrefutable. There's this great clip between Ricky Gervais and Stephen Colbert. You guys should go and Google this. But it's a clip where he's on the Colbert show and Colbert is a deeply devout Catholic and he's offended by the fact that Ricky Gervais doesn't believe in God. And he asks him, why don't you believe in God? And Ricky Gervais says, look, if we wiped out all the books in the world, in a thousand years, everything that's scientific and mathematical would be reestablished. But everything that is religious or theoretically not, you know, mythical, if you want to say, would look very, very different. And that's why I don't believe in God. I'm not trying to question that, but it's a way of answering this question, which is I would try to point my children to the body of knowledge that's largely irrefutable, which is biological and mathematical versus belief oriented, because I think these tools will change one's beliefs. I've been thinking about this a lot too. I think teaching them to be entrepreneurial, resilient, worldly, ability to communicate, ability to lead other people in teams, that stuff's not going to go away, uh, communication skill, et cetera. And I'm encouraging everybody who I work with to just use chat GPT-4 and Bard every day for every single thing that they do. My base thesis right now is that the job freezes, the hiring freezes at all these companies is indefinite. I'm assuming it's indefinite because the amount of work it takes to write a job requisition is more work in some cases than actually automating with AI already the job function. And so I think 20 person companies might, you know, double in size in the next two or three years, um, but still have 20 people. This is going to be a big challenge for the for society. Uh, and if it if that does come to pass, there's just gonna be large swaths of people who are not going to be able to get job interviews for anything other than service jobs. And, uh, you know, we need a lot more plumbers, electricians, waiters, etc. Those probably jobs won't go away, if, especially if we don't let people immigrate. So I, I, I am super enthusiastic about that efficiency. But I think it also means You have to be entrepreneurial because if you can't get a job and you can't get mentored, you better create your own opportunity. You better create your own company. And that's what I'm seeing. That's the game on the field right now. Two or three people who don't have job offers from Uber and Airbnb and Google and Facebook just saying, fuck it, let's start a company because there's nothing else for us to do. And those are highly skilled people right now doing that. I'll say two quick things about this topic. So one is I think there's a lot of AI fear porn out there right now. And I just think that like all of these doomer scenarios are they're not going to play out overnight i mean this is going to take a while second 
if you think about like job elimination, it's going to be some super specialized jobs. So for example, I wouldn't want to be a radiologist right now, but doctors will be fine. So I think if you're thinking about like going into a job category that's super specialized and clearly in the way of AI, then that probably is not a good idea. But most general skills like you're talking about and most job categories are going to be fine. There's just going to be some specialities within them that make it dislocated. Like I wouldn't want to be a truck driver either, you know, because of self-driving, but transportation companies are still going to exist. So I think you just want to be careful about super specialization, I think. But building general skills is always really good. That really should be the point of college. Where would you put lawyers and accountants on that? I'm curious. They're, they're sufficiently general that I don't think they're going to be eliminated. But will they be able to do five times the amount of work? Therefore, we won't need as many? They, they may be able to get more done. Yeah. I would expect them to be able to get more done. Yeah. yeah. But I, I don't think, necessarily think that means we'll need less of them. I mean, the old story about lawyers is that there was one lawyer in a town had no business. Second lawyer came to town and they were both more busy than they knew what to do with. <laughs> so, Induced you know, litigation. Yeah. <laughs> lawyers get 30% more productive. They file 30% more lawsuits and, you know. We're good. Uh, yeah. 